Hello, everyone. We'll let everyone file in because I know you guys are coming from last session, bathroom breaks, water break. Take your time. We also have recordings for all the sessions just in case something comes up. Hi, everyone. And if you guys have any questions, just post them in the chat. Hopefully, we'll get to questions at the end. Um, if not, uh, if you post the question, the aftership team will reach out to you or catch them in their booth. Um, but we're going to start because I know we only have a lot, a limited amount of time. Thanks everyone for sticking around. My name is Francesca. I'm one of the partner managers at ShipBob. I'm really excited to kick off this next session with Ricky. He is the product marketing manager over at Aftership. Um, and Aftership is actually a deep partner with us. We partner with them to create a really great post-purchase experience. So even when um, the parcel leaves our facility, um, Aftership is helping do the work post-purchase just to make sure your customer has a great experience, both on the returns management side, as well as like a tracking customized experience. So with that, I'll kick it over to Ricky. Thanks, Fran. Really appreciate that great introduction. And welcome to our session of a fostering post Black Friday Cyber Monday relationships with returns and reverse logistics. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Um, my name is Ricky. As Fran mentioned, I am the product marketing manager for Aftership Returns, Warranty and Feed. So definitely um, covering a lot, a mix of things from either pre-purchase all the way to post-purchase. Um, but today let's focus a little bit more on post-purchase to ensure that you, know, you guys are being able to engage your customers and looking at what kind of data that you can get from either Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and really transferring that into your um, into your upcoming sales with the holidays and into January. So, quick fact for you, fun fact for you guys: um, Shopify actually did a re a lot of great data for the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and one of the things that they actually found was that about a hundred and eight dollars and about 12 cents uh, is roughly the average cart value for um, for shoppers during this period. And we were looking at about a 20% estimated return rate and about four more than 4 billion in estimated total return business costs. So just looking at your reverse logistics and your returns, it's costing businesses so much just to keep those up and running. But without returns, customers are gonna be like, well, if I can't return to you, I have no reason to shop with you, right? I might as well go to another, another um, brand, small business, or what even if you're a massive retailer, if you have a, offer a better return uh, process. Um, what we've actually then asked ourselves is like, you know, how can customers really start to, how can you address your customers' needs and immediately after Black Friday, Cyber Monday, without you yourself as a business owner or brand to feel that burnout because you know, this holiday season honestly starts even in October all the way to December or and beyond. And so like you're looking at two to three months of just onslaught of customers asking for so many things all at the same time. So how can you ensure that you're not going to feel overwhelmed just by having a business really? And that's where, you know, this is what we recommend as a strategy for our customers or any of the any of our users on our, especially on our platform, is that brands really need actionable insights to improve products and operations and with options that simplify reverse logistics. That can be anything between um, understanding, you know, how do your returns work? How do, what products are being returned and how to ensure that, you know, you're getting the most amount of information so that you can lead better decisions that then allow you to better engage your customers. Because for example, if you're running into issues where like, you know, my, my shirt that I have commonly wearing, honestly, like a lot of the seams are co constantly busting. You know, is that an opportunity for me to come back and return it? Or, and if I'm seeing that a lot of customers are returning this, what does that mean for this product? Do I continue selling it? Is there opportunities for me to, to improve it? And then also on the reverse logistics side, you know, you need to have insights into how many people are shipping with my carrier. Is, are they finding it very frustrating to use my reverse logistics options, like if it's parcel drop-offs or at-home pickup, do I provide enough options for them so that they understand exactly what they're working with? 
this is where Aftership does come in. And um, do we're gonna do a little subtle segue into a new side of Aftership that we're really excited to launch over the next little bit and will be super helpful coming into the new year. Um, and that's basically our Aftership Returns Analytics 2.0. Um, you get to deep dive into expanded analytics. So all of the analytics that a lot of our customers depend on and enjoy currently, we have decided to expand on that so that, um, especially in crunch times like these, uh, brands and businesses like yours are going to have the information that they need in order to run more smoothly, whether that be uh, label cost reporting, return rate um, by product, item-based return rates. And then you're also gonna be able to uncover more insights to make more informed decisions and improve operations. Just like how I mentioned in strategies that you might want to uh, incorporate as you progress. So what's new? So if you are familiar with Aftership, you might be already saying like, hey, I already have all these, I already have all that. So what's different in Analytics 2.0? Um, Analytics 2.0 means, first of all, you get more at a glance insights you're busy already. You don't have the time to like, you might not have the time to dive in deep into every single nook and cranny of your analytics. So we're providing more at a glance analytics and insights so that you have a comprehensive snapshot of your returns and reverse logistics. Um, you get more in-depth product return reasons. So currently we list out all the pr ret product returns, but now you're going to be able to uncover even more insights with your product performance by, via these pro uh, return reasons, being able to break it down and understand, you know, this one product, what's working well, why is it being returned and how can I improve on that? New reverse logistics tracking, which uh, understanding, you know, how your reverse logistics are working, how your carrier spend is working both globally and regionally. And then lastly, being able to recover and recapture analytics, being able to explore how exchanges and alternative refund methods affect your bottom line. So all of these methods are allowing you to not only make better decisions so that you can then impact your customers and say like, hey, you know, these products aren't working, these things aren't working, and this process maybe takes too long, so my customer is getting frustrated. You now have the insights to know exactly what is working, what is not working, so that you can then make improvements so that your customers are able to be retained for so much longer, which makes such a big difference. Flipping back to some of that stats that we had from Shopify, you know, we're seeing that in LA alone, about 611 orders were placed on Shopify every 60 seconds during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And if you really think about how that really compares to your reverse logistics, you're pumping through things so quickly, but you're also looking at a 20% uh, return rate. And so you're also like, okay, I'm also getting these items back so much quicker. Um, I'd love to segue and really talk about, you know, how we're building value with ShipBob too, is that with Aftership Returns, you have a one-stop shop of integration for all of your reverse logistics. You can accelerate return processing, optimize reverse logistics, and even re reduce return-based fraud and manual uh, effort, especially accelerating that process so that it's much quicker for you and your business to really meet where your customers are, are needing and requiring you to be at and, and managing those expectations especially well. Um, and especially with return fraud, you know, you're noticing that about $10 for every $100 are returned in, in about merchandise accepted is actually fraud. And about two, $24 billion in estimated return fraud happens every single year, especially during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the winter holidays. So that brings me to the next part, which is what can you actually do with Aftership and ShipBob. And so we've noticed that, you know, we're allowing customers to auto route their returns to local warehouses, speeding up that return period uh, process and lead time. And then you're also reducing your carbon footprint. So you're being a lot more sustainable. You're leveraging RMA, so return merchandising authorization numbers uh, to update your inventory. So you're auto marking items as received and enabling real time stock info so you can get items back out to your customers faster. You can also pass off re return receipts to, and reviews to ShipBob's team so that you're also saying like, hey, I'm going to be hands off in the, these aspects so I can really refocus my energy, targeting my customers and ensuring that they have everything that they need. And then lastly, being able to analyze re reverse logistics. So going back to what I was saying about like 
hey, I need to be able to get all the information that I need about reverse logistics to make those improvements so that I can run much smoother. And so that's either linking your RMAs for deeper product insights or optimizing product and logistics strategies. That's about it that I have for this session. I know we're a little bit on the on the crunch time, but I would love to base it, uh, would love to really quickly run you guys through our promo that we're having for all of you lovely people on this call. Uh, you get to try Aftership Returns for about a month on us. Use the code 1206 returns and it expires on December 1st, 2023. That's it. I sped through that, but hopefully you guys were able to see something good. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah, you did speed through that. I think we talked about a lot of good points. Um, one question I had just, I think we didn't dive too deep into it. And everyone else um, post some uh, questions in the chat if you have any. Um, but can you go a little bit more into fraud management? Like, what does the process look like for the merchant? And like, how much control do they have on that process? Um, and what does that look like with Aftership? Because I know um, we will mark the condition in ship, Bob, based on how we receive it. How does that affect um, if a merchant refunds somebody or if they, um, yeah, if they give them a refund right away or not, what does that look like? For us, we've seen that merchants really tackle that aspect of return fraud in many different ways. Um, whether that be from what Lisa has mentioned, uh, where you're only allowing customers to replace items with any perceived issues, they were only allowing them to exchange versus doing a straight refund. And then also we've seen customers requiring them to use labels that only they are automating in their system so that it doesn't go anywhere weird. It's all managed in that one system. And then lastly, being able to um, directly auto like route certain items to specific areas. So then you're cutting out those middlemans and people aren't able to trying to, I guess, game the system in some ways, especially with options like green returns or just straight refunds. Great, thank you. And I guess another question, because I we're ready into the holiday season, returns are already flowing in. Can somebody get onboarded right now? Knowing that return season, it, it started, like you said, it started in October, people are shopping. We all have probably bought something on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Cyber Week that was some kind of apparel item for ourselves. And we know that returns are coming heavy more in Q1 once the holiday season is over. Is it easy for someone to get this up and running right now, right before Christmas? And how fast can they do it? Yeah, I, we get this question all very often. It really depends on how complex your system is. If your system is very simple, you're just plugging into Shopify, you have a few items of, up and available, you could get launched, honestly, within a week or two. Uh, it really depends, again, on your back end operations. Um, of course, if you're much more complicated, you could run a little bit longer. but you have to keep in mind that it's not just this period of time. Returns run all the way into the into the new year, especially into January and February, depending on what your return policy is. So even if you get started now, you could potentially have it up and running by January 1st to be able to start accepting all those returns in that period. Okay, great. So it's doable for anybody on this call. They yes, just have to have everything together, be prepared. And if it's a little bit more intensive, it might take a couple of weeks to get onboarded versus one week. Yes. Okay, great. Um, a question here. First, um, Sanderson, can you rewrite your question? Because I didn't completely understand it, but jumping to Maureen, um, Maureen said, how does Aftership facilitate RMAs? Um, we basically, RMAs are built into the backbone of our product. Uh, everything is run by an RMA. It's similar to a tracking number. We use it as an, a core identifier to know exactly where certain things are at what time. Within each RMA, you'll also be able to see a timeline of how that RMA has trans, transformed from like just a return request to a return uh, or exchange, or even when the return has been completed. And with ShipBob's integration, it's directly linked to when it arrives at a specific location or when it's been received and reviewed. Yeah. Great. Um, I'll jump into, I guess, uh, Steve's question, which month has the highest returns? Um, it really does vary, especially in these uh, holiday periods, but oftentimes we do see a lot more in, in December and January, especially after Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and then moving into the holiday return period. Great. I think... Um... Someone asked, last question, I think we can fit in. In what order does Aftership consider RMAs? Does that make sense to you, Ricky? I'm not sure. 
Uh, RMAs are, so Maureen, RMAs are more of like the backbone of our system. So everything is managed on these RMAs. In terms of order, Aftership does do a lot of different types of automation. And so there are different ways that we would uh, pr have priority. But if you're talking about return policy, return policy, definitely good to go. We offer a lot of solutions for that. I know we're a little short on time, so I can't dive too deep into it. Yeah, I would say Maureen, because um, it, it can get very complex with setting up the 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 rules of each merchant or like how to process returns for each product. Um, so we're running out of time. Hop in the booth if you have questions. And thank you guys so much. Thank you, Ricky. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.